Access to physiotherapy services has barriers at the individual and the healthcare system level. I have ideas for solutions. My innovative approaches are sprinkled throughout this video, but stay to the end for my list of ideas to improve the system. There are three individual barriers to physiotherapy services. One is people who don't want physio. Two is people who don't know physio is an option. And three, people who want physio but don't need it. The first individual barrier is for people who don't want physio. Some people don't want active exercise option. Some people have had a bad experience and don't want to return. I found some stats for talk therapy. Talk therapy has rates of how well it works. Physical therapy should have comparable data. The percentages might be greater or smaller, but they're still distinct categories. Some people think that physio always helps everyone with everything all the time. In reality, there are limits. We need to keep this in mind. The second individual barrier is people who don't know that physio is an option. There may be, some may attribute this to socio-cultural issues or a language barrier. Not knowing or knowing about physio has nothing to do with being an immigrant from a faraway land. It depends on what you're exposed to. For example, when I was growing up, I never knew anyone with a tattoo. It was like they didn't exist. Well, only for sailors and bikers and bad guys in movies. So when I hear people go get a tattoo, I'm surprised. It's like they believe in weird things, like the earth is flat or that they need to wear a tinfoil hat. I know some people get tattoos for memorial or special reminders in their life. For them, it's completely normal. It depends on what you're used to. What seems normal to one person might seem strange to someone else. My point is that if you talk to physios, then physio fixes everything. But if you talk to chiropractors, then chiro fixes everything. And if you talk to physicians, well, they say that physio is mainstream and the physician opinion about chiropractors is more varied. The third individual barrier is people who want physio but don't really need it. This is the issue of what is physio and who is physio for? These are good questions that I don't have answers for today. I call this brand confusion. Who should I see for which problem? This is particularly confusing in the outpatient treatment consumer marketplace. Everyone advertises their superior product or service at a cheaper price. You might say, hold on, what does that mean? And I would ask, who has solved back pain? Physios haven't eliminated back pain. Chiros haven't eliminated back pain. Massage therapists, orthopedic surgeons, nope. By contrast, who has solved an infected tooth? Dentists, if that's your problem, that's who you see. So like I said, Physio has a brand confusion problem. Some people think that physios should see everyone for everything all the time, but in reality, there needs to be limits. The APTA advocates for annual physio visits for preventative care and injury prevention, but this doesn't seem to be cost effective or actually necessary. I have another cautionary tale from the world of talk therapy. Look at Abigail Schreier's book, Bad Therapy. I see parallels with, phys with the physio world. Three features of what she is calling bad therapy. One, it's a profit-driven industry. The more patients you see, the more profit you generate. Two, multiple professions offering similar treatments without clear benefits to patients. This is the brand confusion I mentioned earlier. Three, the victim mentality is common, but we need a balanced approach. That is to say, Bad things happen, and people need to take some responsibility for their own maintenance. As an aside here, somebody had the example of going to the dentist, again with the dentist, say, eh? you brush your teeth daily, and then you go see the dentist for bigger issues. For physio, it's daily exercise instead of daily brushing. Can you imagine what dentistry would be like if nobody brushed? This is the, what physio is like because not a lot of people exercise. And like I said, Bad things happen, and people need to take some responsibility for their own maintenance. There are two healthcare system barriers to the access physiotherapy services. One is a lack of funding. Yes, my title says we can't just throw money at this. Well, sometimes money helps. And two, a lack of physio knowledge. And don't get mad when I say this, and I'll explain. The first system barrier is a lack of funding. Lack of physio funding is a big subject. This might be that you need a neurophysio and there isn't one in your area or you need an evening appointment because you work till 5 p.m. and all your local clinics close at 5 p.m. This is also insurance limits. I remember one 
provider I worked with gave everyone eight physio visits. For tennis elbow, eight visits doesn't sound bad, but eight visits after an ACL repair or an ankle fracture, well, then you need to get creative. We need inpatient and outpatient departments to support the needs of their communities. Mm. When you use free government services, you may have to wait a long time before you get what you need. But if you pay for private insurance services, you usually don't have to wait as long. This is the aphorism, talk is cheap and cash gets things done. In this con context, lack of funding also means a lack of physios. There may be a limited number of physios or a limited salary for those positions. Either way, you have an insufficient staff to cope with the incoming referrals. So we get the dreaded waiting list. Wait times, waiting lists come from too many patients trying to access the system that can't cope with that volume. Most clinics triage their waiting lists so that priority patients get in first. Post-ops and fractures before non-traumatic patients. Every emergency room does this. So the answer isn't bigger emergency rooms with more doctors. We need a better system. Some places have tried putting physios in the, in the emergency room. They become like primary contact for multiple skeletal conditions. There's this guy, this guy, and this guy. Brilliant, let's see where this goes. This is where the business side of healthcare meets the medical side. Things that work well and are affordable are the ones that get used. One more story about waiting lists. I worked at one clinic that used one physio for evaluations only. Patients would call up, they'd get an appointment within a day or two. They would see this evaluating physio great, no waiting list, but then the second visit with the regular treating physio wouldn't get scheduled for three or four weeks. They had tricked the waiting list statistic. The second system barrier is a lack of physio knowledge. This is a competency issue. There is an issue of being mature enough to admit when your patient needs more than what you can provide. My point here is that not every physio is an expert on every condition. For example, I have not seen a respiratory patient or a spinal cord patient in a long time. I admit I am not the best physio for those populations, but I do know that some physios do it all the time. Great. I want my patients to see those physios. Physio does not have the same hierarchy system as medicine. Patients start with their family practice physician who may treat them or may refer them to various specialists. That family practice physician then coordinates care. This medical model of referrals would make physiotherapy better. I have two solutions to improve the system. One is to widen the scope of practice, and two is to change the model for delivering care. The big problems with changing the system is, like I already mentioned, one is a lack of funding, and two is a lack of physio knowledge. Somebody has to put these changes into action. And this ignores the idea that physios may or may not actually embrace the changes you want to impose on their profession. The first solution to change the system is to widen the scope of practice. In Canada, pharmacists can now do more than only give out medicines. They can also help treat minor ailments as part of their expanded role in primary care. For physiotherapists, I've already mentioned physios in the ER. The other three ways physio's scope of practice is expanding is one, direct access. This is physios seeing patients without a physician referral. This gives better outcomes and reduced wait times. Two, physios ordering imaging. This may or may not be under the umbrella of direct access, but it is a piece of the pie. And three, physios doing injections. Again, you may see this as part of direct access, but it does not have to be. The second solution to change the system is to change the model for delivering care. One, group education. OA classes, pre-total knee arthroplasty classes, not very exciting, but cost effective. Two, traveling physio clinics, the mobile or visiting physio, uh, for example, having a physio visit a remote community or a particular nursing home on a scheduled basis. Again, nothing new here. It happens all the time. The inverse idea is what I'm calling the church bus idea. This bus goes out and collects a bunch of patients, brings them to the physio for treatment, and then takes them back home again. One of my physio friends works at a clinic where they use this church bus program. That clinic pays for the transportation to get the patients in the door. This is a business numbers game to, uh, to see if it's financially viable. Three, the virtual telemedicine. This has been around even before COVID for remote areas. It can be cost effective. And four, the physician clinic model. In a regular physio clinic, each physio is working with each patient alone. In the physician clinic model, one physio has assistance. 
One assistant does passive modalities. One assistant is an exercise specialist. So that one physio can now oversee the care of many more patients. So like I said, money won't fix wait times, but an innovative approach will. I've presented several options. Some of these are physio-driven initiatives. Some of them follow money and outcomes. Which of these do you like? Which ones make you say, no way? I'd love to hear your opinions in the comments below. My two books are now available at Amazon. What they don't teach you about documentation in physiotherapy school, a short how-to manual for successful daily note templates, and from injury to recovery through exercise, simple functional exercise progressions for physiotherapists to restore lifting, standing, walking. Thank you for your support. Dive into another video here or subscribe for more regular uploads. Thank you.